eating? How are we doing this evening? Good? I see some of y'all eating. You've been around to the food courts. Oh, mac and cheese. That looks good. That looks really good. That looks like Puckett's mac and cheese. <laughs> well, welcome. This is uh, the time for the Puckett's Cobbler Contest. This is going to be interesting tonight because we have 10 entries, but we've got three capable judges of sorting through these flavors and the techniques to make this work for all of us. So I appreciate all that entered, and we're going to have a good time with this tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. But I want to introduce the judges first for you, and I'll let them tell a little bit about themselves. But first, Chef Mark Grimes. Thank you all, and welcome. So uh, I'm a newbie to Tennessee, so hopefully you all welcome me. I'm from a good state. Hopefully you'll like me. I'm from Texas. So uh, really happy to be here in Tennessee. Been here about four months. Just got a house over in White Bluff. And super excited to be here and working for Mr. Marshall and A. Marshall Hospitality and Puckett. So love food, love Cobbler, and, and look forward to uh, trying some. All right. Our Director of Operations, Mark Cromer. Mark. Thank you, Andy. Very excited to be here. Uh, I do have the opportunity to visit all 10 of our uh, locations, so I get to go around and meet people from all different areas, but I do live here um, not far away in Nolensville, so very excited to be here and try some cobbler, and so happy that you guys came out. We have 10 entries today, so very, very excited. Thank you guys for coming out and uh, just ready to get started. And Chef Jeffrey Brown from our Deacon's Restaurant. Hello, folks. Thanks for having me. I uh, decided to get in shape this summer, and I picked round. So today we're tasting cobbler. Thank you for having me. Uh, I love a willing judge. All right. Our first entry is blackberry cobbler. So the judges are going to be tasting this, making notes, scoring on their scorecard. They got 80 points for taste and 20 points for appearance. And they've got 10 different cobblers to taste. So I'm going to hand this, uh, this card here. It looks like a family recipe card, so handle it gently, guys. Don't get blueberry all over it or blackberry, I should say. Awesome. So, Puckett's is a family-owned business. Does anybody know who owns Puckett's? No, it's not Mr. Puckett's. It's Andy Marshall. Andy and Jan Marshall, my wife over there. We started Puckett's in 1998 in Leapers Fork, and uh, I've got somewhere, is Pam still here? Pam just left, but Pam has been with us almost all of those years. She's been with us 20, uh, 20 years this coming year. She's been with us 19 years. We're going to celebrate her big on her 20th. But we started in Leapers Fork and, um, and organically have grown over the years. We now have 11 restaurants across Tennessee, including... Deacon's New South, a steakhouse down in downtown Nashville, Scouts Pub in West Haven, and then the rest of them are Puckets around the state of Tennessee and one in Alabama. Oh, boathouse. <laughs> the Boathouse. Yes, we miss the Boathouse. All right, judges, how are we doing? All right, how about some comments on these? <clears throat> yeah, it tastes delicious. Nice buttery crust. Um, taste us that little bit of lemon juice to kind of zing it up. It was very good. Mark? Yeah, very strong start. I do like the citrus in there, and you can tell that this is a family recipe that's been around for a while. Well, the first thing I tasted was Crisco in the dough, and that's how my mammy made it. Beautiful, brilliant job. Awesome. All right, contestant number one, great job. All right, we're gonna clean up here, and number two's coming out. Number two, 
that's this one. Number two is a snicker doodle cobbler. You had me at snicker. Looks delicious. Cute little presentation and a little jelly jar. You notice I called that a jelly jar, not a mason jar. There's a difference. So, uh, Mr. Grimes, you know there wouldn't be a, a Texas without Tennessee, right? Okay, just want to make sure you knew that. Want to get that on record. Otherwise, it'd be called Texaco. <laughs> so does anybody know what the last puckets that just opened, where we just opened our last puckets? Does anybody know? Hendersonville, that's correct. Yeah, we just opened in Hendersonville. Uh, gosh, it feels like we've been open there a long time already, but it's been about six months, and they're doing great, and uh, another great addition to our Puckett's family. <laughs> they're tasting and they're talking. That's a good thing. Yes, thank you for reminding me. When did school start back? When did school start back? Uh, we just started back. Today? No, a week ago. A week ago. Oh, wow. Summer gets shorter and shorter. Homeschoolers, year-round. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I think Williamson, who's here in Williamson County Schools? You going in Williamson County? Anybody? Did y'all start back? Today? Yesterday? Yesterday. Yesterday? <laughs> Were you ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here. Well, at least you get to come out to the fair tonight. <laughs> she's, a, she's already over it. Okay, judges, any comments? Chef? Let's start with this one. Wow. That had wonderful flavor. You didn't, this doesn't come in uh, dairy-free and gluten-free and sugar-free, does it? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful tasting dish. Yeah, very, very impressive. Presentation, um, creativity, very well balanced. Really nice, really nice. Yeah. I second and third that. It was delicious. All right, great comments on number two. And now we're coming out with number three. Number three is a blueberry cobbler. Blueberry, so we've had blackberry, we've had snickerdoodle, now we have a blueberry. Love the variety. The chefs appreciate that too. The good news is we have professional chefs judging. The bad news is we have professional chefs judging. <laughs> they're looking at all. Uh, they're looking, they're tasting, they're making comments. Got a biscuit top on it. Very nice, very nice. So the original Puckett's recipe, we started in Leaper's Fork, and I did it from semi-memory from my grandmother, and that recipe still stands at Puckett's. We still use the same recipe. But the one thing when I made my recipe, I noticed hers had a lot of sugar in it, a lot of sugar. So I started substituting fruit juices 
to substitute for sugar. So I, we mix in some orange juice, apple juice, different juices to balance ours out uh, with, so the sugar doesn't override it so much. But that recipe is still happening today, every day at Puckett's. I see comments being written down. I see contemplation going on. All right, Mr. Cromer. Love the creativity with the biscuit topping. The pinch of kosher salt kind of balances out the sweetness nicely. I, I thought it was, was really good. Chef? Sure. <clears throat> yeah, very good. Real clean, not too sweet. The flavor of the berries really popped through it. It was great. You know, something about food that I, I love is the romance, the romance of nostalgia. I grew up in the Appalachian Mountains, and I closed my eyes, and this is a dish that I would see at a, a church function, function on uh, Sunday. Um, fresh blueberries, uh, the perfect amount of sweetness, excellent execution. Thank you. Great comments. All right, Emily, we're ready to move on to number four. Number four, I'm going to pull the card out here so I can read it. Number four is Autumn Spice Pear Cobbler. So the, we continue with the variety here. This one's the Autumn Spice Pear Cobbler. Now here's the recipe. And a lot of great notes with it. So Chef Brown said something that I think the reason we all fall in love with the food industry is the memories that it evokes. I just recently did an interview and in the interview, it was for a garden and gun, and they wanted to know what I was thinking when I created some of our items. Something as simple as a fried bologna sandwich. What was special about that? And I said, well, it evoked a memory. The memory reminded me of being with my dad, you know, Dad's cook very simply, or at least my dad cooked very simply, but very good. His, his expertise was on a grill, a smoker, or in a frying pan. And if it could be done on any of those apparatuses, he was good at it. And he used to smoke bologna, take the whole log, smoke it on the log, then he'd slice it and he would fry it in a pan. He always liked to eat his with mayonnaise and a slice of summer tomato on it. And for me, I loved mine with mustard and pickle. So, the puckets, we do it just like we did, and I watched my dad do it. We smoke the whole log, the five pound log. We score it so when it smokes, it opens up and the smoke comes in it. And, uh, and we serve ours with mustard because that's what I like. All right. Autumn spice pear. I love it. Almost looks like a crumble. Yeah. Would you like to start? Yeah, a lot of flavors going on there. The uh, ginger, clove, cinnamon, uh, heavy crust on the top. It's got real, real complex. A lot of flavor going on. Don't forget. That's true. Yeah, very good fall dessert. It's named Autumn Pear, I see why. I think a scoop of Hattie Jane's vanilla over the top would make it absolutely perfect. It is really, really good. The flavor profile I, I taste when I have this is simply love. It is um, 
just amazing. I, I thought the flavors were great. They worked well together. I love the pair. Um, I could do this all day long. You all are some amazing cooks. That's great. I love it. Again, we're talking memories. When food makes you think of something, another time, another place, you know it's good. All right, our next entry, and we're going to challenge the chefs here because it's surprise ingredient, berry cobbler. So I'm going to turn the recipe upside down, and y'all try to figure out what the surprise ingredient is before you look. So Mr. Cromer mentioned Hattie Jane's Creamy or Hattie Jane's ice cream. Anybody know what the relationship with Hattie Jane's and Puckett's is? So that's, yeah, it's my daughter, and it's named after my first granddaughter, Hattie Jane. Hattie Jane Crowell is my first granddaughter, and my daughter and I started an ice cream business together, and we named it after Hattie Jane. And then as she was growing in the business, and I could see that this was really her passion. I gifted my portion of the business over to, to Claire, and it's her business now, and she, it's a fully woman-owned business. She's got two partners in it, her chef and her uh, director of operations. They're all partners in that business together, and, it's, uh, and they're doing great. They now have five locations, and they serve uh, all our locations with their ice cream. So I hope we're their number one customer. We sure you had it last night. As a matter of fact, I think they're out here um, by the animal, yeah, by the arenas back there. They've got a little ice cream truck back there. So if you get a chance, go try it. All right, you can look at the recipe. I was just. Oh, somebody, I, I hear cereal, I hear cookie crumble. Now you can look and see who, the, who has the better taste buds. <laughs> Are you stumped? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody knew the different berries, so you have. And why would you do that? You would do that to balance them out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm a big fan of if you're going to use something sweet, you need something to balance it. Awesome. So let's get some comments. Every one of these are so vastly different. It's really going to be hard to judge it. Um, may I have another piece, please? <laughs> yeah, a uh, very good balance with the different berries. But I think the topping for me was really good. We were trying to figure out if it was a cookie crumble or some sort of cereal. Uh, but it was the cornmeal that they had put in there with some other things. A really, really uh, tasty one. Very good. Yeah, ditto. Uh, the uh, topping had a good crunch to it, and the mixture of berries cut down the sweetness and added a little bit of tartness. So, again, that vanilla bean ice cream or French vanilla would just be wonderful on this. Great. Great comments. And so far, I think the judges have a really tough job. All right, entry number six. And again, staying with the theme of variety, this is a lemon cobbler. So we've yet to have a repeat. And you're halfway through, guys, just to give you a marking place. You've gone through five, five more to go. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm looking around the room and I see some folks that have been very supportive of the culinary program with us. Um, several of you have entered several things in our room back there for our first, second, and third, and several of our live contests. And I want to tell you all how much we appreciate that. I mean, we do these things for you, but they're a whole lot more fun when you participate, and we appreciate that very much. It means a lot to us, and uh, it keeps us going and keeps us, we're about almost halfway through the fair, and we put in a good week before the fair getting it ready, and so we, we are running on your energy. So thank you all for participating. It's been a great turnout for this contest, and it just keeps us excited. So thank you all very much. We appreciate you. All right, we got an argument going on up here. I mean, it, it's getting heated up here. <laughs> I thought y'all were all friends. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, that tastes delicious. It's like a lemon bar meets uh, a cobbler. Uh, the crust was nice. The lemon curd flavor is just delicious, nice, clean. Kind of a palate cleanser. It's very good. Yeah, we, we actually weren't arguing. We were all agreeing about that the lemon curd, just the texture and the flavor of it was really good. Somehow there's a little bit of savory that comes through on it. Um, yeah, great, great balance. Really like that one. I work in uh, downtown Nashville off Church Street. The name of the restaurant is Deacon's. Whomever made this, come down and talk to me. I've got a job for you. Yeah, it's funny you say that because after a big heavy steak, this would be perfect. Yeah, yeah. I think I think somebody said a palate cleanser. That that would reset yourself after a big steak. All right. We're now on cobbler number seven, and I can't believe we got all the way to seven before we had a peachy good cobbler with pecan topping and cinnamon whipped cream. So there's a whipped cream with this one if you don't have it already. Yeah. So it was mentioned Deacon Steakhouse. Does anybody know where we got the name Deacon's? Nope, nope, anybody? The name Deacons. They do. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't after the actor on Nashville. It was actually after me. That was my college nickname, and all my friends from school, all my friends now still call me Deacon. So if you holler Deacon in a, in a crowd, I will answer. I'll turn around. All right. Wow, what a lineup. These all look great. So this year we are celebrating Puckett's Downtown Franklin, 20 years of being in Franklin. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, in some ways it feels like just 
the other day when we started, and sometimes it feels like we've been in Franklin since the beginning. So it's been a great operation for us. We've got a great team there. And uh, look for our uh, 20th celebration coming up in September. We're going to be doing a lot of fun stuff at Puckett's. A lot of giveaways and a lot of great music. And, uh, and we're just going to celebrate our customers. We, we tried to put together a celebration. We hired a, a marketing company, and they came back with all these things about us. And I said, no, I don't want to celebrate us. I want to celebrate our customers because we wouldn't be here 20 years without great fans and great customers. So thank you all very much, and come out and enjoy us any day. But in September, watch for our, our celebration. How we doing, guys? You still scoring? Tough decisions. They are tough decisions. That's the reason you're there, and I'm up here with the mic. I'm a people pleaser. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Chef, comments? Uh, kudos to the chef that made this. Um, I could tell the uh, peaches were really cooked down in their own juices. Not a lot of sugar added to it. And the same thing with the whipped cream. If you're going to make whipped cream, make whipped cream. And, and it amplifies the flavor of the dish. It doesn't hide it through a bunch of sugary sweets. Um, I could eat 14, 15 servings of this, but I won't. Thank you. The uh, pecans were candied, very nice touch. The presentation was amazing, and like Chef Jeff said, that homemade whipped cream, um, I mean, this is a southern cobbler through and through. Just really represents the south in Tennessee. It's delicious. Yeah, going last kind of uh, isn't the funnest thing because they took all my material. So, um, But the peaches got, have great consistency. The flavor is awesome. Very, very good. Awesome. Well, I can see that y'all do have a tough job because I've not heard any negatives. It's all been positive, and it's just a reflection of what a great community we live in and what great chefs are here. <laughs> all right. This one... Keeping with our theme of variety, rhubarb and cherry plum cobbler. Got a little whipped cream that goes with this one also. How many here, if anybody, uh, came to the 4-H cake auction on Saturday? You didn't come this year. I didn't get to overpay for your, uh, your cake or pie this year. Uh, it, was, it was great. These kids, um, these kids that are coming through 4-H and with parents that are spending time with them uh, are learning skills. Uh, as a matter of fact, some of them are even competing today in this contest. But um, there were some fabulous desserts that were auctioned off. A lot of money was raised for these kids. All the money when we sell things, the, whether it's the cattle, the sheep, the goats, the pies, the cakes, all of it goes back to the kids. And, uh, and I think it's a great thing. And I just love what, uh, what Williamson County, what the 4-H program represents here and the uh, quality of, of students that are coming through that program are amazing.
two more. You know, I can tell some of y'all judges up here maybe don't do this a lot. And you started out with really high scores, and then you're trying to figure out where to put the next score. It's hard. It's hard. When the, when the bar is high right off the beginning, it's hard to figure the scores out and making sure you remember your favorite to the next one. All right. Mr. Grimes, I heard you didn't like to go last on comments, so we're going to let you go first. I appreciate that, sir. Uh, this was uh, very good. The little caster sugar on the top, this had a little bit of crunch. Cherries and the rhubarb, a little bit different. Whipped cream is luscious. Uh, very, very good. Yeah, truly the pot of cream is really over the top, but the flavor on this across the board, really, really good. And the, uh, the crust is, is perfect, immaculate, delicious. All right, has anybody ever had, what is this called again? Rhubarb raw. It, 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 I grew up on a farm, and rhubarb was something that my family did grow. It is very, very, very offensive. So um, the brilliant cook, chef that made this took something very, very offensive, cooked it properly, added sugar and plums to it, and made something that almost brought a tear to my eye. Um, you'll never hear me say this, but I'm nearly speechless. Wonderful dish. Um, just brilliant, very creative, and uh, perfectly executed. Outstanding. All right, gentlemen, two more to go. And then it gets really tough. You got to figure out a first, second, and third. So the next one, playing to my ego, good thing I'm not judging, Puckets, Peaches, and Pig Cobbler. Peaches and pig cobbler. Yes. That's the wrong paper. Hold on. Hold on. We got the wrong dessert. Not the wrong paper. I gave them the right paper. They got the wrong dessert. So we're going to go number 10. That's all right. Keep it. We're going to go number 10 and this one. Okay. We got blue ribbon blueberry. Thank you. That would have been disastrous scoring the wrong one. I see them sweating now. That's when you know you're almost hit your limit when you're eating and you're sweating at the same time. <laughs> That's right. That's a lot of sugar. Okay, the blue ribbon. Blueberry Cobbler, comments? Now, working in a kitchen, 
It's my job to inspire fellow cooks to put out the best product. Um, and I always go back to my saying, which is the question, what is the difference between good and great? And it's a simple answer. It's one extra step. This was executed beautifully. Finishing it with the, lemon, the fresh lemon zest was just that one scotch that made a difference for me. It was an excellent, excellent dish. Thank you. Yeah, very good. You guys are making this incredibly hard for us. Um, presentation, really nice. Execution, delicious. Flavors on point. Very good balance. And the zest just takes it over uh, the top. Really good. Yeah, as Chef was saying, you know, those finishing touches really add that little bit of zest, that little bit of zing to a recipe, and that fresh uh, lemon over the top just puts it over the top. Very good. Outstanding. So to keep you all awake after all that sugar, we threw you a curveball there, but we straightened it out. We got the right recipe with the right dessert, and we're back on track. So, entry number 10 is going to be the Puckett's Peaches and Pig Cobbler. So can anybody tell me where Puckett started? The original Puckett's? Leaper's Fork, that's right, Leaper's Fork. That's uh, where I raised my family out there. We lived out there 20 years, raised our family. And uh, once the kids were gone, then Mom and Pa picked up and moved to the city, moved to Franklin. And uh, it was a great place to raise our kids, a great uh, business for us, and, um, and it really afforded us the opportunity for everything that we have now. It was hard work. I got up every morning, 3.30, left the door, went and made biscuits, cooked breakfast for all the locals and those that were driving to Nashville in the morning from that area, made lunch, came back and cooked dinner, and... Uh, and it was that type of dedication and hard work and love that, um, that afforded us the next opportunity, which was Franklin. And we opened Franklin, then Nashville, and then along that path, I sold Leaper's Fork because it was a different model. It was still two gas pumps, a little meat, a little produce, and we had, uh, had grown into full-blown restaurants and so we sold it, and, but it will always be a part of our story, a part of our history, because without Leapers, we would have never gotten the start that we had. So love those people out there. It's a great place to raise our family. Guys, Emily just told me we had three late entries, so th make room for three more scores. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, you like our barbecue sauce. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of fun making those. So those go all the way back. We had Leapers and Franklin, and, um, and I was challenged to sell my barbecue sauce. And I said, well, gosh, it's... it's it's not as easy as it sounds because when you make things in a five gallon batch for your restaurants and then a manufacturer tells you you got to make it in 50 gallon batches the recipe doesn't just can't just multiply it so it took us over a year to get it get it right yeah 
Well, thank you. I appreciate that. He's talking about our, our barbecue sauces. We also have spices. Um, we now have spices and, and barbecue sauces in Kroger's, Publix, Food Lion, which was our latest addition. They just took us in. Um, a variety of independent grocery stores. We're in HEB, Myers in the Midwest, and uh, Food City over in East Tennessee. And so where that was never intended to be our business, it's been pretty good mailbox money. You know, it's been a real blessing. Okay, guys, the easy part's over. Let's do comments on this one, and then you've got to do the hard task of choosing a first, second, and third. Uh, very, very good. Uh, bacon on anything for a chef is uh, usually a huge plus, and on this it certainly was. Uh, the crust is delicious. Uh, just love this one. Loved it. Yeah, everything about this one I loved, and it doesn't say it in the recipe, but uh, I think we could all tell that the rendering of the bacon went down into the crust. So you had a very nice richness from the bacon that absorbed down into the crust as well. So uh, it's just a, an amazing balance. Really, really good. Which one of you derelicts put bacon in a dessert? You guys are geniuses. What a wonderful dessert. Well, well rounded, savory, rich, and it had Wilbur in it. Thank you. So, if, if you're telling me that bacon grease can be a substitution for shortening, you're right. It can be. It, it can be. And it's, it's a great way to uh, enhance flavoring. So, they are going to need just a minute because this is a tall task. But I want all the uh, contestants to know that even though this is going to be hard to choose a first, second, and third, Emily insisted that everybody get a gift card from Puckett's that entered. So everybody's going to get something. But unfortunately tonight, we can only choose a first, second, and third to reward with a gift basket and uh, and gift card. We've got gift cards in there, gift baskets, and then we've got gift cards for uh, for all the other contestants. So that's the reason we call Emily our sweet one. She's all our all our children are nicknamed. I'm not going to tell you what the other two nicknames are, but I will tell you Emily's nickname is the sweet one. She's very thoughtful and thinks of everybody. So as we suspected, it's really close. Um, and they're having to, they've gone through deliberation and now they're going to their scores and they're double checking because there isn't a cons consensus yet on first, second, and third. We got first, second, third, fourth, and fifth all really close. So we're going to the scorecards. And that's going to make the decision. Okay, here we go. First, I'd like to thank everybody again for entering and the fact that it was so close. Yes, let's give everybody a round of applause because this has been a great competition and everybody um, certainly put their best forward and it, it showed in the scoring. So number three in third place, Makisha Hurd. Makisha. <laughs> Emily, where's Emily? Taking pictures? Okay. And the dish was lemon curd, the, the lemon curd dessert. So let's get a picture together real quick. Judges, we're all in it. Me? 
Thank you so much. Thank you for Thank you. All right. In second place, contestant number eight, Christy Young. Rhubarb. Come over here. We're going to get our picture made. Congratulations. I'm proud of you. And first place. Oh, shoot. You would give me a hard last name. Karen Van. Van Arsdale. Thank you. I couldn't read her writing. It wasn't your name. <laughs> the peach and bacon. The peach and bacon. Never can go wrong with bacon. Thank you. Congratulations. Again, everybody that entered, please uh, come up here and tell us what you want us to do with your dish. If you want to take it, that's great. And, um, and Emily has a gift card for you for those that entered. Again, thank you, judges. Thank you for the tough job. Thank you for doing a great job. And thank you all for entering and, and watching the contest. God bless you all and enjoy the fair. <laughs>